How's it going guys? I'm Manny the Phenom of Phenom Studios here with you for this week's vlog for Schoolism. I have completed the John Hugh uh, Digital Art for Beginners. It was um, it was, was semi-long. It, it was a long one but the assignments weren't too, too hard. It was all pretty simple stuff but um, I learned a lot actually. Last week I was talking about how his delivery and, and the and just the videos itself were like making me drowsy, putting me to sleep, like he wasn't the most exciting guy to listen to. But towards the end, uh, the, the last um, assignments in the course, he was going over environment and lighting and, and shadows and he was kind of impact putting all that uh, together, like atmospheric perspective. He was talking about all that in the same assignment. And man, he is so, he's really freaking good. I, I know he's good because the stuff he was doing, uh, he was just boom, 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 looks so simple. And then when I go get to the assignment and I'm trying to recreate what he was talking about, it's, it's not, I'm not having the same effect. But the last assignment was making a, a simple environment, a simple landscape setting, but applying the things we learned. So here are the things, here are the, one of my creations I came up with. So this was the last assignment and we had to do three. Um, before I did the three, I did this, I, I did um, the Nightmare Before Christmas Jack Skeleton piece. It was a drawing that I never finished, so I scanned it to the computer and I colored it, and here it is. So I was trying to apply what I learned to this drawing. So, I, so if you see the, the first mountain in the four, I think it's the foreground, the foreground, midground, background, something like that. Whatever. The mountain is the first mountain is the darkest blue, and then as the mountains go behind them, the the colors kind of lose saturation. And they, they lighten up, and I'm just showing how they're proceeding. So that was a simple effect. Uh, I think I did it right. Um, what, what else did I apply? Oh, he was talking about lighting. So you see the big moon in the background. I, I was applying the lighting to the mountain. You can see it on the top of the mountain. Uh, after the drawing's done, I just make a layer on Photoshop and then just use the overlay setting and just add lighting to everything. Now that I'm looking at it, I should have added more to his body. Um, more lighting to like his arms. But it, it's not it's not bad. The at the end is, is where things really come together because when I add the light and shadow I'm learning it really makes things pop. Like if you see on his face and body there's a shadow on his face and a shadow in the middle of his body and I added that at the, at the end and it just shows that the light's coming from the back and everything's dark in front of them. I could have made it darker, possibly. Uh, I like the tombstones, the, the, how the shadows at the bottom of the tombstone is really stretching. I like that I did that. But uh, not bad, not bad. But these are the three landscapes I did, three settings. So they're really simple. We just had to come up with a creature and then put them, put them in a setting. So the first one I did was this rock creature. Uh, again, not the great drawings. I wasn't trying to make them great drawings, but uh, so I did little houses, and you can see the houses. What's in the the first house is is the biggest one. It's so big you can't even see it in the frame. So I achieved that pretty cool, and it's also the the most saturated. The yellow pops the most, and then and then um, the houses get smaller and smaller and lose saturation. Uh, I, I kind of did the same effect I did with Jack Skeleton with the shadows on the face, put them in the center, uh, um, and then the lighting in the background. I went to town on the mountain in the back, there's a big glow on the mountain and pretty much covers the whole, the whole mountain, so looks cool, I guess. Uh, another thing Johnny was talking about is, you know, pe beginning artists are so... They hold back, you know, when it comes to contrast, shadows, and lighting. That they're scared to like kind of mess up what they're doing or make mistakes. So with these, I just went for it. I went hard, a lot of lighting. In the last piece, I went pretty, pretty good with the shadows. Uh, the last piece, but here, here's the second one I did, which was uh, a sea monster, a sea creature. Which I don't usually do cute things like this, but I like it. it came out cool. <clears throat> The, the lighting and the shadow 
could have I could have pressed a little harder or, or a lot harder could have I could have pushed that more mm, but I think it makes sense you can you can tell if things are what, what's in the background and it, it's lighter there's a saturation kind of uh, I should have upped the saturation in in the ground under the sea creature I think but you know when it comes to color there's lighting shadows and then you have the whole color and, and, and uh, things that and then things that lose its edge and, and lose saturation there's just a lot of things to consider and balance so it's it's crazy it's crazy trying to think of everything at once and balance it and make it mesh together so I'm not I'm not there yet to be able to put everything together and, and put a bow tie on it but <clears throat> cute creature now this last one this last one, the, I did this frog. This one was this one was coming out really bad, um, and this goes back to what I was talking about at the end, where you can really finish a piece off nicely, or which I mean, what I was doing with just by adding the shadows and lights at the end. This was just a um, a regular frog and trees, and things weren't looking good. The colors seemed off, but when I added the shadows and then started coloring the trees in the background, just hiding the hiding the the things that look off, just kind of putting it in the shadows and uh, covering things up. It, it just it makes it makes things work. And then John he was talking about, you know, shadows don't just have to come from things in the picture. There can be stuff out of the picture that you don't see. For instance, like these trees are tall, and there may be other trees on the other side. So there's going to be uh, spots of light poking through everywhere. So at the end, I was just adding lights in the background, little things here and there. Um, so that kind of that kind of worked out. It, it looks cool. It looks like there's sun poking through in random spots like it should be. And uh, came up pretty good, I think. There's a big stump in front of the in front of the frog there, a big wooden stump and it's definitely the edge I think the edge is too hard on it. it it's all it, it obviously is the first thing it isn't it isn't it, well, it is in front because as things recede it loses things can lose its edge because it's farther away but it, it stands out too much i think everything's so soft and then you have know, the stump at the, the front that's so hard and i think it kind of takes your eye and points it more to the stump i think I don't, i'm not sure but i, I should have softened the edge but yeah, those, that's what I've been doing this past week, working on those, and I, I just started a Luffy drawing. I have a, a Hasumi fair this Saturday. It's an anime-themed fair, so I'm working on this Luffy from One Piece. I'm trying to get that ready for the fair. And I haven't actually taken any courses in, I don't know, four or five days. I haven't taken any, I have been watching any tutorials. So once I'm done with this Luffy, I'm done with the fair. Probably Monday I'll be back with the tutorials and I need to decide what I'm going to take next. There's so many courses. I bought a year subscription so I'm four months in now which would mean I have eight, eight months left? Oh man. And there's so many courses man. Check this out. Now I'm trying to decide which one I should take. You have gesture drawing, sculpt, sculpting. I'm probably not going to take sculpting unless I'm done with everything by the end of the year and then sculpting is the last thing. But they're always adding new courses too, so gesture drawing would be is something I need. Um, Andrew, the introduction to digital I just did. Painting creatures would be great. There's more digital uh, painting courses that I, I want to take. Digital painting by Bobby Chu, who's, he's the guy who created all of this, the whole website. Painting with light and color, that's a must I need to take. Digital painting with Craig Mullins. Craig Mullins is the godfather of digital painting, so I definitely need to take that. Characters for animated film, I think I want to take that for sure. Painting with light and color, I want to take that. Watercolor color fundamentals, that would be a last one that I would take because I don't do watercolor, but I'm sure I'll learn a lot from it. Realistic portraits, I want to take that just so I can learn more about realism and make myself look more real. The art of character, I don't care at all about that that would be a last thing I take environment and light with John Byrne that might that probably will be the last that uh, or I mean, the one I take right now environment and light because I need to <laughs> as you can see my landscapes aren't the best looking thing so I need to 
learn more about that. Understanding textures, that's a must. That might be the one I take after environment and light. Essentials of realism I did, learned a lot from that. Introduction to ZBrush, I don't have ZBrush, so I'm not gonna take that. Storyboarding, I wanna get into comics, so storyboarding is very important, so I wanna take that. Designing with color and light. Nate Falks, that's a must. Environmental design, that's a must. Pictorial composition, that's a must. Landscape sketching and watercolor and gouache, I want to take that. Even though I don't do watercolor and gouache, but again, um, there's probably a bunch of other cool things I'll learn from it. Lighting and story and concept art, that's a must. Fundamentals of lighting, that's a must. Fundamentals of character design, must. Exploring, exploring character style, must. Creature anatomy, I uh, definitely want to take that. Drawing fundamentals, I did that one. Oil painting, that, oh, I need to learn that one. Introduction to visual development and expressive characters. That's a must. Like, oh my god, these are so good. And every teacher, it, these are masters. These are master artists. So it's just, oh my god, so much to learn. So little time. So I think I'll do environments and light. That'll be the next one. Let's, let's get a peek through and see what's the lesson plan. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven. Oh my god, this is a long one. Nine. <laughs> All right, I'm ready. Let's freaking do it. All right. All right, guys, thanks for watching. It's been a pleasure. This week will be a little rocky. I, I like to be able to watch tutorials every day, but uh, I'm just not going to be able to balance it because I'm working on a Luffy piece. And then you have to make a bunch of prints and then and then map them all, get them ready for the fair. Then I have fair, the fair Saturday and Sunday. So when Monday comes, I'll be I'll start th this course, environment and light with John Burton. I'll start that on Monday and then Tuesday and then Wednesday and then Thursday I'll be doing it. And um, I'll, the next video will come out next Thursday. So thank you for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, let me know your thoughts if any. And uh, please like the like this video. Until next time. Thank you. If you're not out.